Hey everyone, welcome to Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market Podcast. This podcast is all about farmer's markets. Whether you're a farmer's market manager or a small farmer, food maker, or artisan selling at farmer's markets, you have found just the right podcast. I'm Kat fields White, And I'm Bridget Myers. We're longtime farmer's market managers, educators, and consultants. This week on Tent Talk, Kat and Bridget and former co-host Justine Marzoni-Mead chat about hosting service and informational providers at your farmer's market, from knife sharpeners to home improvement services. This episode was recorded and originally broadcast in August of 2022. Enjoy this encore for longtime listeners and helpful information for our newer followers. It's a pleasure to share it with you again now. Today's episode of Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market podcast, is supported by Project for Public Spaces, bringing together neighborhood groups, nonprofits, government agencies, and developers to share perspectives on creating great public spaces and events. Register this week and meet us at Placemaking Week in Baltimore, Maryland, June 5th through 8th. Find more information by clicking the Project for Public Spaces logo on the resource page at farmersmarketpros.com. Welcome back to Tent Talk, everybody. This week, we are chatting about hosting service providers and information and promotional booths at your farmer's market. Kind of a different category. Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole other thing. It's a whole other world. (laughs) And how to do it, how we do it, and how other markets might do it. And give me some tips for that. So service providers, we consider uh, a couple categories, right? So we have service providers that are offering services at farmer's markets. So who would be in that category? So basically when somebody pr- approaches me about being in our market and they're a service provider, the first thing I say is all of our farmers and vendors sell tangible items that people can buy and take home. Mm-hmm. So we're talking yes. about people that have something different than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're not selling a product. They're selling yeah. a service. So yeah. our farmers and vendors are selling a product. Even our prepared food vendors, it's consumed on site, but it's a product, right? So services would be things like maybe a food-related service is something like a knife sharpener. Which and, we do have. And yeah. he does actually sell knives as he well. He actually sells, he sells knives. knives, which is also yeah. great. And but, many, some knife sharpeners do that and some don't. Yeah. Hmm. But it's so great to have them at our market. And a lot of farmers markets have this because it is food related. Yeah. It kind of pulls in our culinary community. We have a lot of chefs that will come get their knife sharpened. We have a lady that she teaches at a culinary institute and she brings her students every semester to come get their knife sharpened. Um, so it's a good way to kind of connect with the community that we're serving and people that are buying veggies and grocery items at our market as well. Yeah, Yeah. actual chefs. Um, We don't have a lot of other service providers at our markets. We really limit that within kind of our market realm. A dream service provider that I would like to have at our market is someone who will prep your food for you. So you could (laughs) drop off your bag of fruits and veggies that you just purchased and they'll chop it all up. And then I could just take it home all prepped because... I've told your girl somebody, doesn't like to prep. <laughs> <laughs> I've told so many people that it'd be a good idea. No. A lot of the chefs that I know, somebody should open a booth doing just that. Or you could bring them a whole bag of stuff that you just bought because it looked so beautiful and now you don't know what to do with it. Yeah. And, and it would be kind of like Iron Chef where you give them a bunch of stuff and they put it together in things that you can make that you uh-huh. can't figure out how to use those ingredients together, but they can. They could have like pre-made recipe cards. They stick in your little bag when they return it to you. I mean, I think that the problem is chefs think it utterly ridiculous that someone wouldn't want to chop up their own fruits yeah. and veggies. It doesn't occur to them that people don't want to or have that skill to do that. And I'm just here to tell you, some of us don't like it. <laughs> and some of us didn't know how to do it until recently. I mean, you look in most grocery stores now, yeah. Trader Joe's or whatever, they've got chopped up things wrapped in plastic. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, so obviously, there's a market for it. Yeah, yeah. so some like culinary student out there listening to this, that would be a really great side hustle. There's your really startup. Right. Yeah, yep. I think that'd be handy. I mean... And you would have to get like a health permit because you are changing the food, you're touching other people's food, all that kind of stuff. So there actually is a group that does that kind of thing at the Uptown Market in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, I've seen them. And it's actually a culinary type group. It's oh. a group that trains, I think, kind of marginal folks, maybe people that have been in some rehabilitation sort of situations and they're training them to get jobs in the food service business and they bring them out to the farmer's market and they do something like that. They do prep. Yeah. I don't think they put to, put it together into recipes, but they'll you know, peel and chop your potatoes and what have you. Mm. Uh, and it's good experience for them and it gets them into talking to people and it, uh, it also provides 
a handy service for folks like you that don't like to prep. I'm a busy lady. That's right. Can't be right. prepping. Yeah. So <laughs> anyways, there's a business idea for you. That's right. And maybe chefs think that, you know, they'd have to do it perfectly or else you wouldn't buy it. That's not true. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just prep it. Just cut the tops off my carrots. I know it sounds silly, but please. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure there's many other creative ideas that just aren't coming to the forefront of our brains right now, but um, that are food related. But there's also a lot of other service providers that you may have at your market or you've seen at other markets. Um, Things like chair massage Mm -hmm. or like maybe like chiropractic adjustments. Yeah, I've seen a lot of that. um, Or kind of like some more like (laughs) woo-woo. Like there was a Reiki guy at one of the markets here in San Diego or kind of some like meditation-y type things like that. Tarot yeah. card readers. Yeah. Like Fortune tellers. Yes. Yeah. I've seen that. a service. Yoga. Yeah. yeah. I've seen people that have yoga classes at their markets. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's a, that's a service kind of business that's there. And then a lot of times you'll see kid-friendly stuff like face painting. Yeah. And yeah. Balloon animals. Mm-hmm. But those for us tend to be buskers, the balloon animals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> but some friendly people have, <laughs> we do have yeah. a balloon animal He's busker very that friendly. shows up. Yeah. He's a wild um, guy. <laughs> but, but I know some markets have face paint booths for the kids. Yeah. Or balloon animals for the kids. Or... We do get applications from people that want to do henna at the market. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that depending on the community that you're serving, you can determine if this will fit into what kind of shoppers you have coming out, what they're looking for, what the experience is that they're looking for. Um, So deciding on services at your market is really kind of dependent upon. It's personal kind of market. To your community. And Mm -hmm. it's also... You want to decide how many of those you're going to have in terms of balance because you need to think about, is this something that people are going to come out because there's face painting? Mm -hmm. You know, so the Mm -hmm. the kids are going to encourage mom to come and then maybe maybe dad will grocery shop while all this is going on. Mm -hmm. Or is this going to be a distraction and they come out for that, but then they just sit still in that booth and then they don't grocery shop. And, you know, if your main function is promoting your farmers and your food makers, vendors, um, you don't want something that's just going to distract people. Yeah. You want them to keep moving through the aisles. That is something that I've said to people that have been like, hey, can I set up like a face painting station here or can I do my massage in a booth? And it's like we have like a sponsorship program that people can promote their businesses. But I always just say like our function, our mission here for this particular market is we're functioning as a grocery store in the street. Yeah. So you wouldn't have a massage table in a grocery store. You wouldn't have face painting in a grocery store. And so we're like we're just encouraging people to shop and to buy fresh food at at the from the farm stands and the vendors here selling food and a couple craft items, but this is like our main function, and that usually tends to help it click. Right, people who want who maybe have participated in other markets, yeah. and we are not going to host them at ours. Yeah, also at our market, it is already really busy, yeah. and it it tends to be kind of like a tourist attraction too. So it's already difficult <laughs> to shop on a busy day there. So adding some of these additional service providers that are filling up space that aren't that may be detracting from other people shopping. Mm-hmm. It just isn't really a good fit for our really busy market, mm-hmm. but maybe a neighborhood market where you just need more. You just need more people there. You need to people to stay there longer. You want pe- you're you're encouraging people to hang out in a different way. Then it may be a good fit for your market. Yeah. Well, and while we see farmers markets at their most basic, the definition of the farmers market is to promote the sustainability of small farmers. There's a lot of other missions that contribute to people starting farmers markets. And one of the primary ones that we see outside of the whole idea of supporting small farmers is to create community. So they're providing their community with a place to get together or they're trying to really activate a a, maybe a downtown Main Street kind of area that's that's slipped a little bit Mm -hmm. and they want to get more people into it. So if your mission is creating activation and community, those kind of activities could be a great thing. Yeah. It, this kind of gets back to what we talked a little bit about a couple of weeks ago on another podcast when we were talking about budgeting and also like the budgeting to your why that we discussed at the conference. Mm-hmm. Just look at what is the purpose of your market and what is the mission. And if your mission is more community, then that could be a great fit. Or if your mission is to support the local like restaurant and food district in your area, then a knife sharpener could be a great fit. But if you really are just trying to have people get their groceries, then maybe not having like a foot massage station in the yeah. market. So it just yeah. depends. Just depending on where you're going with that. A service that I do wish we had room for 
especially in Little Italy, is a dog sitting service <laughs> that I've seen yes. at other markets before where they have, you know, someone that takes up a few booth spaces or maybe like to the side if they're in a park area or something and you can kind of check your dog in. It's like when you go to Ikea and you check your kid into the little play set, play area, like they check their dog in and then there's like a dog group and maybe it's a dog business, like a dog grooming business or a, yeah. a dog sitting business that's in the community and they watch your dog for you while you shop. That can that's just like two birds with one stone because a it helps that business and it helps the shoppers shop easily easily and then also it keeps the dogs out of your market right and it hasn't an, and then it's something for you to say if you want to say you can't bring your dog inside the market to shop why don't you go check your dog into this dog sitting service yeah. it's really great can play with other dogs those kind of things so I do wish we had that I really wish we did yeah <laughs> always looking for ways to answer a question without saying no exactly so, you know it's <laughs> that that you, uh... say, are you pet friendly we can say oh look at that fun play area for yeah. your dogs say yes and yes, yes and, and. That's right. <laughs> yes and only over there <laughs> okay so in terms of service providers at markets there's providers that are doing actual things at the market. Mm -hmm. And then there's a whole other category of service providers that it would be impossible for them to provide you that service in the amount of time at the market. So Mm -hmm. they are there more as advertising for future business. More of a promotional. Yeah. So more of a promotional. So things like, I'd say probably the most common is like realtors. Oh Mm -hmm. my goodness. So many realtor calls right now. So many (laughs) realtors. Little hustlers. Yeah. Yeah. Mortgage bankers. They're trying to Get out, get the word out. Yeah. So realtors, but they can't like sell you a house at the market. Correct. They're probably going to try it. But right. <laughs> I mean, they're not offering a, offering a service that your shoppers can receive at the market. They're uh, promoting a service that they provide offsite. Yeah. yeah. It's going to happen somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and along those same kind of lines, you've got a lot of people providing home services seem mm-hmm. to come to farmer's markets and think that would be a good demographic for them, which it probably is. Yeah. So people that sell solar systems, mm-hmm. um, water filtration systems, yeah. window replacement, um, all those kind of home services. I've, I've also seen a lot of like timeshare oh, type yeah, things right. like that. Like, and this is kind of cheese ball, but they're like, guess how many corks are inside of like, you know, like that's <laughs> yeah, their kind of like activity. how they draw you in. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's like definitely rentals, promoting. stuff like that. Yeah. I like the home services, especially if you're in like a nice, like a neighborhood market um, and you have a lot of regular shoppers that live directly in the area. Like it's not super touristy. I mean, that's a nice service to provide to your shoppers if that's something that aligns with your mission as a market manager, um, allowing, you know, like gutter cleaners, if that's a problem in your neighborhood, or solar panels, if you're in a place where that's popular and people want to, you know, reach those end users. Um, it gets a little tricky because you don't want to have to go through like a whole vetting process with people that are promoting a service there. But yeah, you're you know, kind of in the middle of it. There's yeah. an implied approval. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. That, that gets a little tricky. And also when you talk about uh, we don't do massage chairs because that's not something you'd find in your grocery store. Mm-hmm. Although I got to say, there's a there's a guy I, at Whole Foods that has yeah, no oh, brother. I, I guess I'm actually shop at I'm those like, kind of grocery stores. A dollar a minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm honestly, say, maybe I, I got a ten. I got a ten right here <laughs> at the market. As the market manager, I wouldn't mind getting a massage. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. I, but I, I, think, I did perk up when when Justine said foot massage. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Sure. But I think also like liability wise, if you're putting your hands on somebody, that's like that worries me a little bit. That oh, just yeah. gets my wheels turning with like a. Of course, we're in a very litigious state. That could yeah. be just fine somewhere else. Again, depends the on the thing, area. You know what? I'm not sure you want your... If people are coming out to grocery shop, do you want them to have to run a gauntlet of... Obviously, if you don't have a product to sell, you're going to be pretty salesy yeah. about yeah. explaining your services and things. And do you mm-hmm. want your shoppers to, to have to deal with that? If you've got multiple folks like that there. I have seen markets that do. Yeah. that have a whole bunch of those folks. Uh, my inclination would be if I was managing a market that where I was going to allow multiple promotional booths. Yeah. Is I think I'd put them all together. I would group them together. Yeah. Yeah. I'd put them in a section on their own so that, yeah. you know, if you're interested in finding gutter cleaners and mm-hmm. solar systems and all those things, you've just bought a house in the neighborhood and yeah. that's interesting to you, then you've got that little home show section down there. Yeah. But, it's a little but if you're just offering. there to, to pick up your broccoli yeah. and, and get your almond milk and get out, mm-hmm. uh, you don't have to go through all of that interaction. Yeah. Because I have been at market, I've worked at other markets that have you know, more of those service providers. And sometimes, you know, if you're just trying to get in and get out, you have to like kind of dodge them and 
they do typically ha- have like different sales techniques. It's not just like, oh, would you like a sample? It's more like, hey, let me tell you about these sure. new vinyl sliding windows. Right. And yeah. I can just like, show oh, you. I so they, they have to, yeah. Yeah. their whole goal is a conversation and mm-hmm. you don't necessarily want a long conversation. Now, yeah. what we do with them actually <laughs> is something totally different, which is we only host that kind of business, a promotional business. As what as a sponsor activation, yeah. So they have to agree to be the market sponsor for that day, mm-hmm. and there's a sponsorship fee that's much higher than a farmer or vendor would pay. Yeah, yeah. and they only are there once, and They're there's only once. one of them at a time. So we right. don't at our market multiple sponsors, and yeah, which is an advantage to them because mm-hmm. their message is not diluted. Yeah, yeah. So they have access to, you know, everybody in the market. It's just them. Mm-hmm. The people who are approaching them in terms of shoppers are not kind of beaten down already because they've talked to <laughs> six other service providers. They're yeah, in yeah. kind of a salesy mood. Um, so we just calendar it. We charge them. They can pay for that one day. We'll sign this as today's sponsor. We call them out in the newsletter so that people know that, you know, they've paid more to be there and they help to support things like our traffic services and our market match and, and all that. And that's how we manage that kind of service. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but maybe, I mean, it just depends on the market. Maybe sure. you're looking for more promotional services. Say you don't have a big farmer and vendor pool to draw from for your market. So you just want to get some more tents on the street and make it a more kind of community conversation market using, you know, approaching realtors or solar panel or like home good services is a great thing to have offered at your market, I'd say, as opposed to some other kind of random services like car dealerships or things like that don't really align with a market because the market's kind of like home neighborhood, mm-hmm. um, like, you know, gardening boxes, things like that. I feel like people that go and do those kind of services at your house could be helpful. So that's probably the trickiest thing is yeah. figuring out how to draw those lines. Yeah. yeah. How to but decide it, who kind of matches the mood and the ambiance and the theme of your market and yeah. will be a good fit. But I think you should draw that line and you shouldn't just not think about it and toss everybody into the soup because... It's going to be confusing. So you need yeah. to just, again, like we've always just said, is get that mission statement for your market. Who who are you targeting with this market? Who is your community that's coming out to the market to shop? And what could you do to provide them the best experience? And then make sure your farmers and your vendors and everybody that comes to your market, including services, align with that. Right. Yeah. So it makes and sense. Similar in the way when you're like vetting food vendors and farmers, you also want to make sure that those vendors that are going to participate in your market are going to... Um, bring people, they're going to bring their customers to your market too. You know, it's a two-way street. It's not just you're in our market and we're going to bring everybody to you. You want to make sure that they're also bringing people. So, um, you know, maybe you decide that you do want to allow service providers, then make sure that like maybe they have an email newsletter. Make sure that they're including your market and their promotional stuff. And or maybe they're a realtor that has really awesome contacts in the neighborhood and say, hey, yeah, I'd love to have you at your market if you're going to also bring people to shop here. Spread the word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We do that a lot or we see a lot of market managers that do it with nonprofits that want to come do promote their nonprofit operation and maybe solicit donations or memberships. Uh, a lot of times, Erin Tormey, actually, up in Northern California, talked with us about this at one point. She does very specific things in terms of requiring a nonprofit that's going to take space to show her that they have promoted the market and encourage people to come visit them at the market in at least two email newsletters and two social media posts. Oh, wow. And they mm-hmm. have to do that in order for her to come out. And they have to show her that they have an email list and that they have a social media account and that they're going to do things that will invite people to the market as well. And then for her, it makes sense to give up that booth space. And I think she's donating a booth space to maybe one or two nonprofits per market. We have a lot of nonprofits that ask us to donate space. And because we're a very full market and our market is, in fact, a fundraising function for the nonprofit that is the market sponsor. Yeah. We have to explain to them we can't donate space because one of the functions of this market is to raise funds for this community organization. Yeah. yeah. We're already doing service to a nonprofit. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but it, that is also because in California, that's one of the only ways that you can operate a market is right. if you are a nonprofit. But in other parts of the country, you know, if you're you independently own your market, that might be something that right. you have room in your budget to allow for. Well, and a lot of times a a market that's owned by a city or a municipality, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're open to bringing in nonprofits and just giving them the space as sort of a community service and part of the thing that the city does. Yeah. They can afford that. They're not really trying to raise funds with their market. Yeah. It's usually more of a parks and rec type of function or a community development kind of function having the farmer's market. And in that case, bringing those nonprofits in and letting them set up there makes sense. 
I do see a lot of them doing the same thing that I talked about with the service providers, which is they kind of put the nonprofits in their own section. Yeah. So there's an yeah. informational section of the market, which is set apart a little bit from the shopping section of the market. So if somebody does need to run in and get their groceries and get out, they don't have to feel bad about not engaging in those long conversations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, now I'm thinking about it, it could be fun, too, if you did it maybe like once a month or a couple of times a year where you did something where it's like spring cleaning and then you invite out the gutter cleaning person. Yeah. You have somebody that will like season your cast iron pan or like, you know, you you That's bring a out great service. <laughs> I just like thought of that because I had my family over for Mother's Day brunch and my brother's like, your cast iron is so well seasoned. <laughs> but you, you want to start could... a booth? Just to... <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, you could do things kind of on a, a couple of times a year. Yeah. Um, or maybe if you're, you know, if you have a little extra space in your market that you don't want to give up all the time, but you can do a special event that would help promote these particular services and say, like, get it now because they're not here every week. So yeah. we've actually done that a lot at various markets that we've operated the first two weeks of January, mm -hmm. because that's a time when a lot of times some of your vendors, not so much the farmers, it's usually the non-food vendors or specialty grocery kind of vendors. They've made it through the holidays. If they're going to take a vacation, it's that's then. the time yeah. that they take a couple <laughs> of weeks off during the year. And that's a perfect time to invite gyms and yoga studios and Pilates teachers and oh. all of those guys mm -hmm. to come in and set up a booth and promote gym membership because yeah. that's what people are thinking about, that that's New Year's resolution time. kind of time. Mm -hmm. We attract a lot of people to the markets at that time of year for the same reason. Mm -hmm. People are making resolutions to shop local and to eat healthy, and they come out to the market, and that's a good time to have a little section that's all gyms and yoga studios and things taking turns doing demos and signing people up. Yeah, maybe like chefs that like teach cooking classes and things because your New Year's resolution might be to learn to cook more or something like yeah. that, or like gardening classes. Just think of people's like New Year's resolutions or whatever's happening during whatever time of the year and then inviting those service providers to have a booth just for a short period of time. Yeah, or like, like a, a local, idea. A yeah, local bike shop doing like yeah. quick tune-ups yeah. or something like that. For sure. That's a fun one. Yes, we've had bike, we've had bike service huh. providers at our market. I think it was like bike to work week or something. Right. Oh, um, so kind of hanging on whatever little special activities happening. You know, like in the spring at the Pacific Beach Market one time, we had a big section of people that ran summer camps. Yeah. So oh, that's could, a good idea. Oh, yeah. Like the YMCA camp. came out. Exactly. Or like exactly. Little League sign up. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. yeah so just think of like activities that are happening in the neighborhood because those groups have like a far have reach too. And they have newsletters like... I get a million summer camp newsletters so they could say, hey, come see us at the market and you can sign up your kid, get 5% off if you come to the market and sign up. And so kind of people, making those deals. Those businesses don't mind doing that, but just keep in mind that it's not necessarily going to occur to them. Yeah. So you want to make that a requirement of showing up and mm -hmm. give them maybe some sample verbiage that they can drop into their newsletter mm -hmm. or into their social. Make it easy for them to cross promote you. For sure. And make sure you ask them for their social and like their correct website and all that stuff so that you're getting the word out about them. And it can be a really great exchange you know, promotion mm -hmm. exchange. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And we talked about this um, in our episode where we talked about fee structures, but it's okay if you, you know, if your service providers pay a different fee than the rest of your vendors, mm -hmm. especially if you have a very farm forward farmer's market, if that's your mission to really support local agriculture, if you're really there for the farmers, then that can be reflected in the way that you charge booth fees. Absolutely. And there's no, no good reason not to charge an additional amount amount for the service providers because they really are getting a valuable marketing experience by being there. You, the farmers and vendors that show up every single week, rain or shine, they've developed the trust with the customers that means that you have good foot traffic. And if the service providers are going to take advantage of that to promote their services outside the market, it's fair to ask them to pay for that. Yeah. It's like our substitute vendors. <laughs> That's right. Like, hey, we built this up. So if you want to pop in when it's busy, high time Only in the on summer. the good times. Yeah, only yeah. on the good days. The sun's shining. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not going to be here on the dark, rainy nights, then you're going to pay a little extra. And I think once you say that, they go, oh, of course. That's that makes fair. sense. Seems yeah, so just finding a structure that works for you. That's right. A great, great thing for your market, your shoppers, and those service providers, for sure. That's right. Yep. Make it a strong community offering. Yeah. Thanks for listening today. And thanks to Project for Public Spaces for bringing policymakers, neighborhood and business organizations, market operators, and other stakeholders together to learn, collaborate, and create better communities for everyone. And for supporting Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market Podcast. Find out more and register now for Placemaking Week in Baltimore by clicking the Project for Public Spaces logo on the resource page at farmersmarketpros.com. 
Thanks for listening to Tent Talk today. Please leave us a review on your podcast app or wherever you listen to Tent Talk. Let us and others know how you're enjoying the podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode of Tent Talk. Connect with fellow Farmer's Market folks in our private Facebook group, the Farmer's Market Pros Community, and follow us on Instagram at Farmer's Market Pros. Find online education and other resources at FarmersMarketPros.com. Tent Talk is brought to you by Farmer's Market Pros, where passion meets profit. Tent Talk is hosted by Cat Fields White and Bridget Myers and produced by Leandra Hayes with original music by David Mead. Tune in next week for another great episode.